Morning everyone and welcome to the first Lantern Rouge podcast. First of all a disclaimer. The views that I'm about to present are mine, i.e. Lantern Rouge. They don't reflect Old Portland Cycling Club or the committee or any particular member, except me of course. So what are we talking about today? Well what else but we go. And the whole Soy Sky Star Saga staggers on, now with the publication of the Common Select Committee on Doping in Sport. Their investigation into British Cycling and Sky is only one part of the report, but it's the part that's garnered the most pu publicity, the most headlines. But we have to ask, why? What precisely is their criticism? And what is it that WIGO is supposed to have done that's so bad? Our national hero, greatest living Olympian, inventor of the sideburn, 2012 Tour de France winner, what has he done that's so wrong? The committee accepts that he's done nothing illegal, and yet the headlines in the papers, the stories in the news, the interviews with Jonathan Tin and Locke, all seem to suggest that this man, this tallest of tall poppies, is to be brought low. Our greatest ever champion is no longer the, the hero that we thought he was, and his feats are of clay. But are they really? The report suggests that Wiggins took Triamcinolone under a TUE when he wasn't really ill, and that this was a key factor in his winning the Tour de France. Wiggins accepts and admits that he has an asthma problem. So do a lot of cyclists. So do a lot of swimmers. So do a lot of professional athletes. Is he lying? Does he really have asthma? I don't know, but I'm happy to believe that he does. Should he have taken Triamcin alone? Again, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Trust me. He says that he consulted his doctor and it was prescribed. It can be used as a performance enhancer. One of the side effects is believed to be that it leads to weight loss with no loss of power. Give me some of that. And there is no doubt that Wiggins at the Tour de France in 2012 was seriously below his normal weight. But he was still capable of putting out serious power. But is that a sign of taking Triumcin alone? Or is it a sign of, of serious training up and down Mount Tidy in Tenerife? I should know, I was there last week. I prefer to believe that it's the training. And in any case, the Triamcinolone was taken under a TUE, a Therapeutic Use Exemption, accepted and approved by the UCI. Again, Wiggins was not the only athlete or the only cyclist, then or since, to have taken a TUE. Not that that makes it okay. So why the criticism? And what does it mean to say that he crossed an ethical boundary? The committee have no proof that he took Triamcin alone without being actually ill. There's nothing unethical about having a TUE. There's nothing unethical about taking a medicine that's going to assist his asthma. There's nothing unethical in what Wiggins has done at all. If there's criticism to be made, and yes, there is criticism to be made, then it's of Team Sky and their lamentable record keeping. Who can say why their record keeping was so poor? Who can say why their government's procedures did nothing to check whether the elusive, reclusive, seriously unmemorable and curiously unremembering Dr. Freeman, he of the stolen laptop, prescribed the medicine that he did. Well, the, GLC, the GMC may have something to say on that matter, but we'll have to wait for their report. Dr. Freeman seems unable to have made the basic records, maintained the basic records. And this may be well something that brings Sky down, and in some respects, it deserves to bring Sky down. Brailsford set up Sky on the basis that they would be a clean team the first team that one could truly believe in, the first team that one could truly trust. 
And yet over the years, there has been a litany of what can only be described as stupid, stupid mistakes. And as the old Japanese proverb has it, once is happenstance, twice is coincidence, third time is enemy action. There have been too many problems within the Team Sky setup, but that doesn't mean that an individual athlete like Wiggins is guilty of doping. What it means is that he worked for a team whose desire to win led them to not necessarily cutting corners and doping their athletes, but cutting corners and not maintaining proper records, cutting corners in not having effective governance procedures, cutting corners in not checking on what their doctors were actually doing. Brailsford's argument that this was in some way connected with medical confidentiality just doesn't hold water. And Brailsford himself, I'm sorry to say, has run his course. His achievements are legendary. What he did with British Cycling and what he did with Team Sky will always be remembered. But his performance now, his performance in front of the press, his performance in front of the select committee, his performance when confronted with a difficult question by a journalist is poor. It doesn't mean that he's lying. It doesn't mean that he's got something to hide. It just means that when it comes to doing a key part of his job, he falls short. Wiggins appeared on the BBC expressing his innocence of doing anything wrong. Do I believe him? Yes, I do. Why has he got any reason to lie? Actually, he's got every reason to lie, but let's leave that there. If Wiggins has doped, his career is over. All of his achievements are as nothing. To be ground into dust like the ashes of Armstrong's career. Now I know that there are plenty of athletes, Armstrong as well, who thought that the risk was worth taking. And it probably was, as they didn't all get caught. But somehow, somehow, I don't believe that Wiggins is one of them. And I just hope I'm proved right. Only time will tell. The newspapers will have a field day. The newspapers have had a field day. The, inter the BBC interviewed Jonathan Tiernan and Locke, a man sacked by Team Sky for transgressing doping rules. Was this made clear when the BBC interviewed him? No, it wasn't. And the usual suspects crop up. David Walsh, who did good work on Lance Armstrong, has always been suspicious of cycling. He's always believed that there's more to the story. But he's a journalist. He wants there to be more to the story. If there's no more to the story, David Walsh himself is no more. He's mined this particular vein in the Sunday Times for weeks after weeks of not very interesting journalism. Move on, David. Find something new. There's nothing to see here. Maybe there is something to see here, but we haven't seen it yet. Maybe the real story is still to come out. But this, this select committee report, this isn't it. This is not the real story. Wiggins is not the real story. The committee chairman himself, Damien Collins, says on TV, he, Wiggins, did nothing wrong, but he crossed an ethical boundary. Well. MPs certainly know how to cross an ethical boundary. It takes one to know one, as they say. But it doesn't mean that Wiggins has crossed an ethical boundary. However, the real problems of Sky are yet to come. Wiggins, after all, never failed a drugs test. But Froome did. See you next time.